for about 20 years on and off, my parents have worked in a, in a factory that manufactures these cords. These are bungee cords. They still work there now. For my parents, this has been the American dream. My mother left school in the second grade. She was forced to work in the fields. My father, one of 13, started working when he was five years old. He started shining shoes. He started selling newspapers. And they met when they were about 17 or 18 in Colima, Mexico. They got married. And when they were 18 and 19, they came to the US. I was one year old. Now, I come from a pretty colorful family. That's a picture of my family there, my parents. I'm the oldest of three, and that picture shows my daughter as well. We grew up in the San Fernando Valley in a 900 square foot house, and it got cozy. At one time, we had 10 people living there, two bedrooms, one bathroom. It was a lot of fun. Um, I have a lot of memories about the challenges that I went through as a, as a young kid in San Fernando. Um, I remember my next door neighbor, uh, Miss Garcia, using a, wa a hose, a water hose, to siphon water into our bathroom when our water was shut off. I remember the family members who came to our home to deliver groceries when my parents lost their jobs. And when I was 13 years old, my mom got me an internship experience. Sounds great, sounds very middle class. Um, sounds like a wonderful opportunity. I got to make these. I got to sit on a table with a bunch of women, a bunch of family members actually, and for eight hours a day at 13, I got to take these metal hooks and insert them into this cord. And my mom would sit next to me and she'd say, siéntate bien, sit up. She'd say, faster. She'd say, calladita te ves más bonita. She did not want to be the woman who brought in that lazy teenager to the factory, right? She wanted to be known as, as someone who had a daughter with really strong work ethic. So I really disliked that experience. I really, I was angry about it. And it wasn't until several years later that I realized this was my mom's way of teaching me a lesson. This was her way of showing me what my life would be like if I didn't go to school, if I didn't change that status quo. And it's very telling of some of our values as immigrants, right? What are they? We work hard. We're optimistic. Anytime anything went wrong at home, my mom would say, pues ni modo, ¿qué le vamos a hacer? And oh, it made me so angry. <laughs> and anytime anything goes wrong now in my life, I try to channel my inner mom and I try to say, okay, we'll overcome it, but it's really hard to do. It's, it's, a, it's part of those immigrant values. We're optimistic, we work hard, we love unconditionally. We love so much. It's probably why we have such big families, right? Lots of love to give. And we're risk takers. We really are. So how did I use all these lessons growing up? Well, I can tell you that when I found myself 17 with a baby in high school, they really became applicable. Was I optimistic? When I left my house, went to MIT to study engineering, and life got hard with my daughter, I focused on every week, and I thought, if I can only get through this one week, I'm golden. And of course, next week would be worse. And then again, I'd say, if I can get through this week, I'll be golden. So I worked hard. That's a photo of my daughter and I in college. We took the risk of leaving California. It was the first time I had ever left California other than to visit family in Mexico. I'd never been away from my parents, never traveled alone. I didn't have any family in Boston, and it was scary. But what, what helped me do this? My parents' unconditional love, okay? That strong work ethic, that desire to improve our lives. Did it work? It sure did. It's a photo of my daughter and I at our first graduation from MIT. The second photo is my daughter and I at our second graduation from MIT after three degrees. Okay. Now, I get to work for the Boeing company now. And over the last 10 years, I've had the opportunity to work on airplanes in the Puget Sound in Washington. And I've had the opportunity to work on satellites here in California. 
I'm currently leading a team of people responsible for assembling and testing two satellites for the government of Mexico. It's an amazing job. I love it. It really is rocket science, guys. Really, really <laughs> is. And, and as much as I love the job that I do, as, as much as I love my team, every day walking into the workplace, there's a reminder that there's a lot of work left to do. Too often, I'm the only female in the room. Okay? Statistics say, according to the National Science Foundation, only 2% of STEM professionals in the US are comprised from the Latina population. Only 2%. Last year, along with four great friends, I co-founded the Latinas in STEM Foundation. It is our mission to inspire and empower Latinas to pursue and to thrive within STEM fields. In just five short months, we've reached 600 students, 150 parents, and about 100 professionals. Now, there are a lot of organizations in the community that are doing work like this, and they're great, okay? They're important. Why is it so important that we all care about developing our communities? Why should we all care in this room? We should care, first of all, because it makes business sense. It makes business sense to develop a growing population so that they can take on these coveted jobs that are becoming available in our country. It makes sense because the people we help honor their parents. They honor the work of their previous generations. I can't tell you, for me personally, how awesome it, it's, it's felt when I can change my mom's smile from that to that through dental work. I can't tell you how beautiful it feels when I can watch my dad experience the Grand Canyon. So what can we all do now? We can help get rid of that imposter syndrome at work. When I set foot at Boeing, I thought, I'm not smart enough to work here. I don't have the right background. Now, after three degrees, sometimes I still feel like I can't do it. And it still tries to creep up. I punch it in the face, but it tries to creep up. And most importantly, we can all be present in our communities because we can't expect kids to want to be what they can't see. Right? Once we're out there, we're in, we're in the workforce, we need to come back, we need to serve as role models, we need to tap people on the shoulder and say, hey, you can do this, because I have. A lot of us have benefited from programs like that, from people like that, I sure have. So again, we can't expect young kids to be something they can't see. My name is Nora Cadena.